Hi everybody. Welcome to Vijayasav Foundation. My name is Manoj Swaminathan and today we are going to learn about a very important topic and that is quality management system in pharmaco vigilance. What does a quality management system entail? We are going to learn about that. So let me start off by telling you that there is something called as a GVP module 1 developed by the European Medicines Agency and this guideline on good pharmacovigilance practice the module 1 which talks about pharmacovigilance systems and their quality systems is the backbone for a good quality management system please remember that i will also share this link with you just in case you wish to go through this document and one thing i would like to just add it's been more than 10 years now and this is one module which has not been updated yet. So you can imagine so much of efforts would have been put in for developing this module, right? So what does a quality management system entail? First and foremost, there are something called as quality documents. We'll be talking about this in detail, but quickly I would like to tell you that these pertain to deviations, corrective and preventive actions and also change controls and many more documents. Then the training documents, right? So when you talk about pharmacovigilance training, it can be for the department personnel as well as for the company personnel, right? And also for the department personnel, you need to ensure that they are continuously uh, trained on the newer aspects, right? So the knowledge keeps upgrading with time. So that is about training and also you need to ensure that you have proper training records in place. Then archival of documents, right? So if you have a lot of documents, where are you saving them? If they are soft copies, then okay, you know that where you are saving them. But again, you need to ensure that uh, if there is any disaster, you can still retry these documents. And when it comes to hard copies, you should know where these hard copies are being saved and also uh, are these fireproof cabinets and if there is an external vendor you need to frequently audit them check whether they are doing a good job okay then the sops right the standard operating procedures then the working practices and then other procedures like guidelines right so and so on so all these are also under the purview of the quality management system. When I say SOP, it is the SOPs that are used for each and every pharmacovigilance activity and also the cross-functional activities. Then business partners and vendors, right. A service provider also comes under the purview of the quality management system. And also you can have business partners which can be distributors Right? They are the people who would be supplying or I'll say distributing the products in other countries or other territories. Right, So they also fall under the purview of quality management system. Then validation. right? So uh, also called as computer system validation. And recently it has been re-termed as CSA. Right? So when you say validation that means that whatever you are going to input or you are going to say if you are say typing something and what output are you getting right so that is about validation to just to ensure that what you uh, put in you get the right thing right or otherwise it will be garbage in garbage out gigo right we don't want that so we need to ensure i'll give an example that uh, there is uh, a case report pertaining to a female patient and uh, when you click on the gender female, so that time your pregnancy field pops up, right? At the same time, if I say that, okay, the patient is a male, you click or you select the gender as male, and still if the pregnancy field pops up, then it's a mistake, right? So this is an example of validation so that you ensure that all the information is correct, okay? Then audits and inspections. Yes, so when you say audit, it is something which is done by uh, an external partner or within 
the company there may be some other department that may be auditing the pharmacological department and inspections is when it is uh, being undertaken by the regulatory agency so audits and inspections also fall under the purview of quality management system then finally continuous inspection readiness so this is the main role of the quality management system or the quality assurance department in pharmacovigilance they need to ensure that the department is ready for pharmacovigilance at any point in time if in case anything goes wrong then they will also be held accountable so they need to ensure that everything is going on well okay then the quality management system documents right so we will learn about them in detail so when you say qms documents this include the change controls so whenever you are bringing in some change in the pharmacovigilance system you need to document that appropriately and also demonstrate that these things have been documented properly and undertaken properly and only then you can change close a change control so that way you need to be very careful at times people forget to raise a change control and they don't document any uh, change anywhere so that becomes a problem okay then kappa so what is kappa corrective action and preventative action so this is when there is a deviation or there is a mistake or a say a problem area which has been identified how you resolve it right and also how you ensure that this doesn't get prevented or sorry uh, it doesn't get repeated so this is kappa okay then deviations so deviations are a change or i would say uh, what you can identify as finding right or it can be non compliances so this can be deviations from the expected outcome right or it can be that a regulation says that you should have so and so things in place and you identified that these are not available so that's a deviation right so even deviations fall under the purview of uh, the quality management system finally risk paper right so that is qualitative risk management so this is uh, where uh, i'll give an example that you are on the verge of uh, getting inspected and uh, you are looking or reviewing your systems and you find a problem there and uh, you also want to ensure that uh, if the inspector finds this finds it out there is no problem in that right so what you would do you would document it appropriately you would say that uh, if such and such thing has happened how can it impact the pharmacovigilance system and we have identified this what corrective actions we are evaluating and so on so that's a risk paper just to show that okay we have identified something in advance and also we are working on solving it then let us talk about the written procedures right the standard operating procedures guidelines and other reference documents so which of them are used in pharmacovigilance first and foremost you need to have sops on case processing and submissions right so it will talk about everything like triage data entry uh, medical review quality review and the submissions then the aggregate safety reporting so this is about psurs pbers or peders so all these documents how they are written and uh, also, also something on risk management and uh, writing rmps rems rems is in the us and risk management plans in other countries then signal management how you identify signals and if you identify a signal what do you do with them so all this have to be documented appropriately then audits and inspections so here it is that if uh, you are inspected then how would you uh, participate in the inspection right so how would you provide documents to do the inspector and so on and if about audits then how do you conduct internal audits how do you conduct external audits and so on so all these have to be written properly so when you, you when you talk about it it's like uh, handling an audit or an inspection right so all these have to be documented then it systems so apart from pharmacovigilance you also need the it system uh, sops so this can be related to the safety database or it can be related to the quality management system uh, 
so you can have something like a trackwise right so that's a quality management system so you can also uh, document that in the form of an sop then at times you can also have company websites you need to monitor them right so even that you would need to document in the form of an sop then internal compliance so this is primarily about uh, internal audits right so or cross functional audits so you need to document that as well then uh, so what i would do is i'll go one step behind and talk about uh, compliance so there are two separate uh, departments okay pharmacovigilance compliance is different and pharmacovigilance quality assurance is different so pharmacovigilance compliance can be under the Uh, leadership of the pharmacovigilance head right so that is a possibility where they would do something like a self audit and they will identify if there are any gaps or how they can do some kind of process improvement so that is internal compliance at the same time if you talk about pharmacovigilance quality or pharmacovigilance quality assurance it is an independent function so they will uh, uh, not report into the pharmacovigilance head then the quality management system documents so i told you something about the documents and uh, this is like uh, creating an sop on deviations an sop on corrective and preventive actions an sop on change control and so on and also sops on training archival of documents and so on and finally cross functional sops so these are also under the purview of pharmacovigilance inspection so if in case you have a regulatory affairs department a quality assurance department or the manufacturing quality so all these may fall under the pharmacovigilance inspection apart from this uh, medical information then you have uh, clinical uh, trials right so you can have the clinical department also under the purview of your inspection and then you also have it so it is uh, apart from the safety database and uh, also the qms database you can have some other it aspects as well this can be related to the uh, backup and restoration disaster recovery and so on then finally marketing right so marketing department sops may also be under the purview of pharmacovigilance at times marketing team may do something like a patient support program or a market research program so all these will be important because you may receive adverse events from all this uh, uh, process okay then training right so we generally call about sharpening the axe or sharpening the saw right so continuous training is important so that your knowledge keeps on getting upgraded very important because pharmacovigilance is very dynamic the regulations keep on changing and also it is quite volatile so you should keep on revising what you have learnt so that is very important and uh, this way you sharpen your saw or axe on a continuous manner in a continuous manner and also your uh, internal pharmacovigilance department people or other department personnel even the qualified person for pharmacovigilance so all need to be trained on pharmacovigilance right so that is very important and as far as a qppv is concerned they need to constantly upgrade their knowledge right they should be aware of the recent regulations and so on then archival right so if you look at this this is a uh, so called fireproof cabinet right so where the pharmacovigilance documents are saved right so this may include all the uh, confidential documents Uh, all information about uh, patient details right so this can be super confidential as well so when you look at this what do you think is there anything wrong with this uh, fireproof cabinet can you think about it so i'll make it easy so there is no lock here right so what what if you have a huge fireproof cabinet but no lock anybody can steal the documents right so that's why you should have a lock okay? it should be under the Uh, i would say the custody of uh, say pharmacovigilance head or the quality head so that this doesn't get misused so you should always save documents under lock and key so in case you are having an inspection please ensure that your archival facility is locked okay and proper access control and so on 
then business partners and vendors right so this can be the service providers in pharmacovigilance this can be partners who are distributing the company products in various countries so all these also come under the purview of pharmacovigilance system so i'll give an example that uh, your company has uh, say azithromycin okay and uh, you also have the license in uh, say kazakhstan but you don't have uh, commercialization activities going on in kazakh because you don't have a team there so you get in touch with some local distributor and you supply the product to that company and they will distribute your product in that country so now uh, if there is a pharmacal inspection it will be you who will be accountable because you hold the license right so what i'm trying to tell you is business partners can also be under the purview of pharmacovigilance inspections so that is why you need to constantly audit them ensure that they are doing a good job right so that's something then vendors yes uh, primarily the service providers so it's quite obvious because they are doing work on behalf of you so they would obviously come under the purview of pharmacovigilance inspection then validation right as i told you about computer system validation so this is about uh, what you enter and what you get as an output whether that is matching or not right and also uh, i'll give an example about excel right in excel also you have validation that uh, yes or no should be the only answers and what if somebody says not applicable or unknown they should not be able to add this or uh, enter this option at all they would only get two options yes or no so this is validation something like this you can even do for safety databases and uh, other uh, uh, documentation uh, systems that you used in use in pharmacovigilance and uh, uh, all your system should be properly validated and these documents can be inspected right so that's very very important then data integrity right so that is very very important these days and this is something which is evolving in terms of pharmacovigilance where uh, you should uh, sign off documents on a real time basis and also you need to ensure that uh, there is proper integrity right with regards to any activity you perform and you ensure that every document is done on the on a real time basis today you got some of your colleagues trained so you should document it today itself not that okay i'll do it later and next month you remember oh i forgot to get that documented and you take uh, the signature and you include uh, that day's date so that's not acceptable it should all be on a real time basis so this is something a very very important aspect uh, which is gradually evolving in terms of pharmacovigilance then product complaints and recall so yes this may not directly come under the purview of pharmacovigilance but then if in case there is a product complaint or a product recall in the company the pharmacovigilance department should be aware of that right so if there is a recall due to a safety issue right so there is a product mix up right uh, and uh, say a paracetamol strip also has some some tablets of say uh, azithromycin so that can be dangerous as well right so you have to ensure that the pharmacovigilance team is continuously involved in all these activities right so this is very very important so that way even product complaints sometimes product complaints may be associated with uh, an adverse event uh, an example is lack of efficacy right the patient took the medicine but the product was not effective so they may complain to the company so you need to document it appropriately right so this is an adverse event come product complaint when it is lack of efficacy then audits and inspections right so both are different terms as i told you that uh, audits can be internal audit external audit or it can even be self inspection again these are done by the uh, company itself or uh, they may bring in an external auditor to perform these activities and inspections i told you these are always regulatory inspections undertaken by the regulatory agency so again uh, it's under the purview of the quality management system now this is very important quality continuous inspection readiness right so you should be inspection ready because an inspector can be at your door any time right uh, 
they may give you advance notification or they may not. Right? That's why you have to be inspection ready at all times. And uh, this also comes under the purview of the quality management system. Right? So uh, that's something very, very important. And uh, also these days, uh, the inspectors have started uh, visiting countries and also uh, or, or inspecting multiple uh, organizations or pharma companies over there. So this is something which is ongoing nowadays and you have to be careful and also you can have a remote inspection. So that way also you have to be careful about it because remote inspection you don't need to give so much of an advance notice and uh, they can tell you that okay, uh, two days later I want to undertake inspection. So that is possible because nobody has to travel or something, right? So that way it is very important. Then you need to, uh, the pharmacologist quality assurance department needs to maintain compliance, right? So that is very important and they need to measure it and also ensure that uh, with time the compliance uh, threshold can be increased, right? So that's something very important so that uh, every inspection will be successful. So that way uh, the pharmacologist quality does a very important role or uh, does a very important activity. Now, uh, let me show you this uh, organogram. So here you have the head of global pharmacovigilance and under him or her you have the pharmacovigilance team and you also have the uh, head of pharmacovigilance quality. Do you think anything is wrong with this uh, organogram? So the head of pharmacovigilance quality should not report into the head of global pharmacovigilance. It should be an independent function. Other there may be some kind of a bias. I'll give an example that uh, say uh, the head of pharmacovigilance quality comes across some major gaps in the system and tells his or her boss who is the head of global pharmacovigilance that uh, so many problems have been identified. So it is possible that because uh, it's not an independent function, the head of global pharmacovigilance may take, an biased take a biased approach, right? and tell that no, no action is required or this all are okay uh, or we will try to hide the findings or so on. So that way it should always be an independent function, the pharma equivalence quality assurance department. And uh, it's again a very, very important role. So, and th they would also audit the pharma equivalence department, right? So that's why it should always be independent. I'll show you some common inspection findings associated with the quality management system. Okay. So here, first and foremost, absence of QMS. There are findings or I have seen critical observations which talks about QMS failure. That there is no quality management system at all. So that this can happen and uh, you can find them or you can find such observations in the uh, MHRA annual report as well. So this is quite common. Then training. So this is uh, pertaining to the department training and also the external training for the uh, external in the sense I am talking external to the pharmacologist department. That is the cross-functional and all personnel in a pharmaceutical company need to be trained on pharmacovigilance. And also if you train, you should also document it appropriately. So this may be associated with uh, assessment, right? So training is one of the favorite areas for the inspectors. Please remember that. Then no documented audit strategy, right? I spoke to you about the business partners or vendors. So you need to audit them frequently. You should undertake risk-based assessment that high risk, medium risk and low risk. And if it is high risk, then you need to audit them more frequently. And if low risk, then you can audit them less frequently. So that way, uh, in some companies, they don't audit the partners or vendors or even their distributors. So that's a problem. Then, uh, as I told you, the pharmacovigilance quality should never report in to the pharmacovigilance head. Right? So that's again a problem. And uh, this is also identified in some companies. So this again a major observation. Then delayed closure of deviations. Right? So if you identify a deviation or a problem area, then uh, you should have timelines to close them. Right? 
but then say if you gave a timeline of say 28 days but then it's two months but you have not closed it so that's again a major problem right so you need to close deviations on time then the open corrective and preventive actions right so this happens after the deviations or after an inspection right during an inspection the uh, a regulatory agency came up with or the inspector came up with uh, some critical observations or major observations now the company the pharmaceutical company would need to then uh, prepare or uh, or document uh, the corrective and preventative action right and they would have timelines for that so if they are not able to adhere to this timelines this can again be a major problem right so these are also common inspection findings now it is possible that the inspector or the agency came for inspection four years ago and they had given some major observations and now when they come back they want to ensure that those previously uh, documented uh, corrective and preventive actions are closed right so that's very important otherwise it will be a repeat uh, finding and it may even be escalated to critical or upgraded to critical right so that is a possibility so i would like to end with nice words from dalai lama the dalai lama so which is learn the rules so you know how to break them properly okay? so you should know what is required right you should be an expert in doing that only then you would know how to break them properly so uh, it's it's very important that if you are in pharmacogenics quality then you should know the subject very well so that's very very important so i trust you found this session to be very interesting right it's a very very important topic and these days there are a lot of uh, job opportunities for pharmacovalence quality uh, experts so that way again a lucrative field as well okay so feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions comments or even suggestions okay all the best thank you